Three days ago. Yeah. Oh yeah, but Black about Sun to in the hizzle, all for shizzle dizzle. We've got an excellent show here today. We got the Bastards NC Club in the hizzle for shizzle. What's going on, fellas? What's going on, bro? Oh. What's happening? All right, all right. Say something, Chavis, because that... Uh. What's going on, bro? Okay, okay. We good? Yeah, yeah, we good now, yeah. All right. Today we had the Ku Klux Klan in Stone Mountain. Goddamn, y'all disrupted our goddamn march up the mountain. What's going on here? I don't know. I guess uh, I guess these groups are getting pretty desperate for membership, especially with what's going on with the political climate in the world. And it seems like uh, they're reaching out to very, very, very poor demographics that are not very organized. And if you saw today's event, I think the most organized thing about today, other than us, was the state of Georgia's ability to air lift 25 people on the taxpayers' money out of the area that they were paid to protect. That's that's kind of what's got me stumped right now is uh is how these guys were provided with water bottles and safety and transportation on the taxpayers' dollar in a public park that's paid for by the taxpayers. Okay, okay. So let me let me let me clear this up. So Stone Mountain is owned by the Daughters of the Confederacy. Correct? No, it's okay. owned by the people of Georgia, black, white, everybody. Okay, taxpayers. Okay, okay. Um, now, I was there, you guys were there, there's a lot of confusion, you know, they, you know, they didn't know there was one group, uh, I forgot the name Confederates of Confederates of Michigan. The Confederates of? Michigan. The group with the flags? Yeah, yeah. yeah there, was, there was a, we, we applied for okay. our permit to go into Stone Mountain, uh, legally, we went through the process, uh, Justin saw the paperwork through, uh, the state of Georgia denied us our permit. Oh, shit. And... Steve Panther was on a radio show with me, and I actually kind of debated him on the show against his group. He reached out to us and let us know that he had 120-something spots open on his permit, okay. and that we were free to come under his permit. Uh, after meeting with him and his group, we definitely don't think they're racist. They, they might be into holding on to uh, old symbolism or ideologies, right, right. but once we were in the park, us anonymous and uh, Rotten Stitches we separated ourselves and went on a direct action to try to get face to face with the KKK. Okay, okay. Now, one might say the KKK has a, you know, First Amendment freedom of speech. And, and they do. I'll agree with that. Everyone okay. does, but not when you are actually committing acts of violence. When your group is committing acts of violence, when your right. group has been proven to murder innocent people and promote your members to do the same, do you really have that right anymore? Right. Is that really is that speech anymore? Where does that line where does that line drawn? Right, right. And we what, got several death threats on email just from them alone. And, and it's endless. We get, we get so many death threats that it, it's it's laughable when they try to say that they're just a peaceful group because they're not. And their very basis is violence and murder, and it is is taking advantage of innocent people and using scare tactics right. to scare away people that would help, like us. Now, one thing I'm concerned about, you know. Me being a black panther, you guys, you know, with the MC clubs, and even, I'm going to say even the Klan, you got agitators, you know? Um, me, myself, you know, uh, I kind of rendezvous with the Huey P. Gun Club, and all they saw were Confederate flags. So I was like, hey, 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 those guys, those guys are cool. So everybody's like, okay, but there was one guy. Yep. No, man, that flag represents this and that, so he kind of got, you know, riled up, and then people riled up again, and it's like, I mean, how do we deal with situations for, like that? For us with the flag, and this is what we, how we feel about it, um, none of our members wear the flag, right. and it's not something that's forced. Okay. We just don't. It's not something that was even discussed. Like, uh, when we went to the State House, we weren't at the State House because of the rebel flag. We were at the State House because the KKK was taking advantage of our state's tragedy, which was the nine human beings that were murdered in the church. And I say human beings because normally when people say what happened in Charleston, they say the nine black people that were shot. Nine human beings were murdered. They tried to come into our city and do the same type of bullshit that they're doing in this city. The only difference is our city in South Carolina, our state, is not so kind to hate groups. They don't put money out to protect them. They didn't escort them. When they left the state house in Columbia, they all got the shit beat out of them. Right. Here, they got airlifted. Airlifted? That takes pilots. That takes gas. That takes coordination. Absolutely. That means these guys had their own personal team 
of ass wipers today look out for them while the black groups the pro heritage groups us, Anonymous, all of us were out there on our own sharing our water bottles, sharing our maps, talking to each other, letting each other know what was going on. Even when people disagreed, there was times when the groups were getting along and then and times when they weren't, and times when they were getting along and times when they weren't. And the only thing I see from that is the cops and the clan enjoying that because that's the only people that, uh, that are winning from us not getting along. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Um, anybody can jump in because, you know, I want to talk about uh, I guess just different ideologies. I mean, I, like I said, I was kind of <laughs> taken back by some of the, well, I, I'm not going to get into, well, I'll, I'll get into it. I mean, you got so many splinter groups. And once upon a time, the Klan was looked at as a, a family group. Yep. It, so was the mafia. It, 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 it was the right, same. Right, right. I mean, right. Good point. Okay, it's the same as Hitler Youth. Okay. You look at the way the Hitler Youth were viewed. The way we look at Boy Scouts. Right. The way that we, as Americans, look at our Boy Scouts. What do you think Iraqi children think about our Boy Scouts? They probably think that they're in training to be soldiers that are going to come, and, and that's just you know. So look at Hitler Youth. It, it's always cute until it grows up. Right, right. And and the KKK is still trying to play that it's cute. Right, but it's not right. fucking cute, and and, and uh, you can tell by their tactics that they're only into attacking people when they have the advantage. But anytime we have the advantage, the state comes in and levels the playing field for them. But what, well, now, what, what is the clan's right? I mean, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't even know anymore. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> right, I'm trying to figure that out. Right. Uh, they hate white people like us. They hate black people like any black people right, they hate anyone that's spanish they hate anyone that's japanese and, and, and asian they, they don't they don't know what they're doing and, and sometimes i see groups of kkk that are pro-gay or that have black members there's sectional groups yeah, that are splintered true. and they're fighting with each other and they don't seem to know what's going on so when we look at it is basically if you're promoting supremacy of any race as being a dominant race then we don't fuck with you we don't respect you and we will continue to do what we're doing to promote the human race getting together because all these sectional groups all this i'm this and this power and that power it, it's it's all good to be proud of your culture and where you come from because that's that's a part of who we are in the fabric of our communities but in order for us to build a world community right we have to stop looking at it as race there's no such thing as race there's the human race there's one race there's right. human race if you went outside and i, I, I picked up a, a alley cat and i picked up an orange cat and then you brought me a gray cat, and it's a, this one's a tabby and this one's something else. Right. You're going to tell me that the gray one's not the same as the orange one just because they're not the same fur color? But there's right. fucking cats. It's right. the same thing. When I see a black man, when I see uh, an Asian man, it's the same thing. There's no differential between us. We, we don't look at that as a group. If I see a gay man, we look at it the same way. What you do in the bedroom has nothing to do with the conduct of your character or your actions. Right. Right. So a lot of people seem to have lost it getting behind an ideology is really cool and it can be really empowering and you can you can start spouting off some really stupid shit. Chavez, let's talk about that because I mean, you know, I think what sets people being organized, common collective and people just being emotional respect. is, well not only respect, respect, but political education too. And the willing to learn and the willingness to learn. Right, right, yes. right. And, right. and we're teaching each other every day. No group should ever think that they're better than the other just because of your history. All the groups that were there today, for the most part, did their best to try to overlook their differences. And I think they did. Get and there out. were yeah. times when friction happened. Right, right. You can't make everybody get along in the same room, but what brings people together not only is a common enemy, more than that, is a common respect. Right. If you don't have respect for me, but I have respect for you, and I give you some. Right. You didn't have any before, but I gave you some. Now you have a little bit to give back to me. And if you can't do that gesture, you're going backwards. Right, right. So, let me ask this question. Because, like I said, I, I learned something today. Like I said, the, uh, you know, the Confederates, you know, it, it, it took looking past the bag and then just listening to them, you know. But there were still some people out there that were killing it. Oh, they're tricking us, this and that. But then, it, you know, I mean. Oh, it made us cringe. I'm not going to lie. There, there's certain parts about it where. I don't know how you guys felt, but I'm not used to being around a lot of uh, Confederate flags like that. We we wouldn't nah, even we allow wouldn't ourselves to take pictures. Oh right, right. Because you know, our image to a, to the public in in general, 
We're not ignorant in that way. Yeah. We understand it's what the not, flag is. The flag is not a racist symbol. It's been turned into one. But right, right. If we're taking pictures with it, it looks other people, and, and that's exactly what happened today. Is right. you got you had Black Panthers standing on the railroad tracks yelling at Michigan Confederates when they're not racist at all. But right. Michigan Confederates right. are yelling stuff back on the same side, and, right. and we're trying to mediate because both group. And, you know, we talked about this before the event. It, it, groups are going to rub elbows the wrong way. Someone's going to miss and interpret what someone said I right. mean, and I'm not going to say any names but you know today I was told that uh, someone was going to own me as a slave and I could have let my better judgments you know my, my, I could have let my better my lesser judgments get the best of me right, right, but right. out of respect for the allies and the comrades right. that's only going to give them what they want which is infighting that's right. and no matter what you feel you have a right to what you feel. No one can tell you that. And I don't think any group should tell another group they don't have the right to what it is they believe as long as it's not endangering somebody, as long as it's not promoting hate speech, and as long as they're not promoting their members to go out and act as if they are supremacists. Right, right, right. But what I don't get about all these groups that get together is you got groups going in there saying that the KKK are wrong, and right. then when other people are there protesting that they are wrong, they're saying that we're wrong for being there because we're not black. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. That's so of you're basically saying it's okay for you to hate, but it's not okay for them. And the well, fact we're that anybody's hating, hating anybody, all just is the problem. To fight That's the why we are there. Right, we right. don't want the hate. We want everybody to be equal. We want everybody to love and to be loved. Right, we want right. a peaceful world. And today, that's what we need. We deserve that. We that's made right. sure today that we didn't promote violence. We made sure today that we didn't promote hate. We made sure today that us as a club and those that associated with us, when we saw it fixing to happen, we're safe. We stepped away and we kept everybody safe. Okay, okay. A direct action is a great thing, but self defense is more important. And unless we were put in a position to defend ourselves, which we have been in the past, right. then we're not going to do anything. I talked to some other groups and I told them, I said, I looked at this at, as a strategic point. I said, if the Klan got permits and got police protection, they're going to be on their best behavior. So that means that somebody from our group got to swing first. You know, but the, I don't mention the group's name. But yeah. They won't try to use it. It's a common so, tactic. It's a, uh -huh. it's a common tactic. They're going to they're gonna try to bait Antifa and anti-racist and, 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 uh, and other groups, they're going to try to bait them into, into us being the aggressors. With what happened in Anaheim, right. with the situation from what happened on the ground, the pictures, everything, they knew that they were going to be outnumbered, and they knew even though people hate the KKK, a lot of people were going to say, these guys were outnumbered, yeah, they're Klansmen, there's five of them, there's 25 you know, anti-racists, these kids were asking for it. I don't feel like the kids in California are asking for it. I feel like it was a direct response to how they're feeling. Okay, okay. Like, these kids see this shit in their neighborhood. They're, they're emotional about it. Right. They're young. They're passionate. That's right. Some of the best movements were built out of that passion. Not a lot. A lot of these kids have never seen a fucking KKK member marching down the streets of California. Right, right. Was he, was he just to attack him? You know, I'm not here to promote violence, but at the same time, who are we to say where he was in his mindset, and who are we to say what went down between those two guys? I haven't seen a video of the whole thing, right, right. but they got their ass kicked. But what they did get was the sympathy vote for being outnumbered. Right. So now I, they can't get the numbers with us to win. So now they're going to use their lack of numbers to try and get a fucking sympathy vote from the public. Which is the human factor. Because people will always go, well, you know, right or wrong, you shouldn't have done that to them. But no one's saying right or wrong, you shouldn't kill three girls in Alabama with a bomb. Right, or right, right or right. wrong, you shouldn't be hanging fucking whites and blacks that walk with Martin Luther King. There were there were freedom bus riders that used to go missing for days at a time, and they would put their faces up on billboards. And there was like a ninety percent chance if your name went up on that billboard, you were already dead. Right. So that doesn't that doesn't offend anyone anymore. I guess we've forgotten about all that. And that's white and black. That's that's American. It's it's our struggle. And the struggle is real, and I think because we're actually overcoming that struggle, they're becoming weaker. I have to say, you know, the Klan's changed over the years. Right. The Klan has gone from where the white sheets mass people to where they want you to see their face, to let you know they're coming. Right. To the street preachers. I grew up 
where street preachers were common. Right. And those were some of your biggest clansmen. Right, right. But growing up in a Jewish family was no different than growing up in a black family. Right. Or growing up in a Chinese family. Or growing up in a white family. Right. The difference was we were told we were going to burn in hell. But we were always told to be the better person. That's right. To, to stand for what you believe in. Never back down, but be the better person. Sometimes to be the better person, backing down is a part of that. Right, right. But how many times do you back down before you stand back up to fight? That's true. That's true. I, I like that. Um, I mean, uh, uh, one second. Let me make sure this thing don't fall asleep. Uh, okay. All right, guys. Okay. Hey, y'all quiet over there, man. <laughs> Are you doing enough talking over there? <laughs> well, a lot of this, a lot of this okay, for okay. us, and I want to say this, um, something I felt today, seeing the young punk rock kids, and seeing the anonymous kids, and seeing the young Black Panthers, regardless of the differences, regardless of the different walks of life they came from, seeing them in their element really made me proud today. Absolutely. Because it is alive and well and it is still being passed down generationally, and the culture that is punk rock and the culture that is black power and the culture that would lead to our club and would lead to, you know, Huey P. Newton Gun Club, these are all radical ideas that came out of a very similar time. Right. And as I get older, it can be discouraging when you don't see the resurgence of your youth happening in the movement. Right. It is very much alive and well, even though we might be misguided with where we're aiming our shit at each other, the fact that the pieces are on the board, right. it's alive. Right. And, and these kids really, they outshowed us today. A lot of these kids really humbled us today. Okay. I think I think the first time we came to our, our, our state house event, we were running on adrenaline and it was, a, it was a new experience in a way. Coming to this, it was humbling because now these kids are the ones taking it to that level and they're the ones pushing the limits and they're the ones that were fighting riot cops and pushing to get closer and closer and closer. Right. And we just sat there and watched it all. I mean, it was it was all inspiring. Right, right. And I like that. I like that inspiration. Um, like I said, um, I mean, we already know about the Klan. Like I said, my concern was just some of the potential in fighting. I'm not even saying like with other groups, but just, uh, you know, sometimes, let me just say this, sometimes you have groups and then sometimes those groups splinter in faction and splinter in faction. And by the time it gets down, it's all, it's not even yeah, close to what it was when it started. Right, there's different ideologies going around, you know. Um, well, I think a lot of those groups, when they realized they could not get to the clan the way they wanted to, uh -huh. they started finding new targets uh, to see, fight with. Right. And, and frustration. And that's just frustration because now your frustration that you wanted to take out, that you that you saw your goal and you saw it demise you, you want to build that back up and go after the first person that you see. And it happened a lot today. And that was a lot. Mm -hmm. Steve's group, right. Steve, right. Steve's group, you know, they, they were doing their thing. You had the three percenters doing their thing. You had, a, you had a lot of groups doing their thing. And if you noticed, there were intervals where all groups were getting along. Right, right. And then it was followed by confusion and a few altered words between two members of different groups. And the next thing you know, you've got police involved. You've got five people running over talking more shit. It, by the end of the day, it just seemed like it was everyone was just sort of losing sight of what was important. Yeah, they did lose sight because I thought I was I was told, don't let the clan march to their destination. So by them being blocked off, you're defeated. So why? Yeah. I don't. They got they just stayed in their fenced in area, 150 feet away from public. I've never seen. I've never seen. I've never seen that kind of barricading before. It was like a movie. It was like a movie. It was like watching the same animals. There were 200 cops circling around a 300 radius for them, and they were escorted the helicopters to get out. Hundreds and thousands of our tax tax money. Let's talk about like. I look at the police reaction to our groups. Like some groups were treated respectfully, some some of the groups treated some of the cops respectfully. Right. Yeah. Some of the cops were fucking assholes. Some of the cops were trying to bait an already heightened situation right, to get right. people to go to jail. Right. 
I'm That's sure there are a lot of people right now sitting in, in jail right now in Atlanta for good reason for what they did today. And I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of people sitting in jail right yeah, now. They, they brought out busloads of, of correction jail. officers oh, to stand in riot loads. gear. Busloads. We're not talking about one or two. Four, We're talking five. about maybe eight, ten busloads. And full, we're talking about front to back full. Right. Not to mention you had state police. You had local they police. Had bomb squads. You had bomb squads, yeah, SWAT. Sure That's another thing. Does anyone yeah. know anything about this alleged yeah, they said there was a bomb threat, and they yeah. actually found a bomb. Yeah, I heard that they, they found, found a bomb. They did. Yeah. They found a bomb. Yeah. That's, the, uh, that's what we uh, heard. We're not sure if it's true. Yeah, but we see, don't know if it's true, but okay. it could be but see, but see, here's the deal with that. Uh, we know we saw you know, a guy yeah. in a full tactical bomb suit going past the KKK. We saw him in the back of a truck. So we know he was out there for something. I mean, what does that say about the state of things when you can't have you free know, speech without the fear of a bomb? And 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 I, I, I'm gonna say this again. Think about the Klan in the early '50s. They right. would show up. Yeah. They would be full force. Oh, yeah. Hundreds upon hundreds. Yeah, You'd they, look, they and it's nothing but a sea of people. Right yeah. Now and ready to shoot you can't them. see that no more because that ideology is not here. Now it's right. us. It's, now it's us standing up, up against them. And we're the ones rolling. Saying that now. we are are not gonna take it. We're not gonna stand for it, and we're not gonna tolerate it. I grew up where my family was told there is no such thing as color. You maintain that color, okay. you will lose your own battle with yourself. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this real quick. Just, just, just I got to throw this in there. After hearing about this bomb thing, you know, right now, uh, Obama went to a um, little side note, Saudi Arabia. And our people were saying, you know, can we open up the... Uh, investigate some files, you know, because some people believe that Saudi had something to do with the towers bomb. Saudi said, if you guys open that up, we will, they basically blackmail Obama, and they said, we will pull out this and do that. I mean, my, my thing is, if you didn't do anything, why, why make those kind of threats? So, I, what are you I, I, huh? It's like, what are you hiding? Yeah, what are you hiding? So, I'm, I'm, I'm not so quick to... Even even the plan being bad as they are, or the false most, flag. Yeah, yeah, false I think flag. it's a false, it's false flag. flag. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm not really so quick to be like. Uh, I, I agree. Um, you know it's saying? like this. No, it's like this. They they got to sell newspapers, and they got to make this. They got to make what happened today sound really scary to right, the people of, of Georgia to to justify how much money they spent that belongs to the people of Georgia. Okay. The only way you're gonna get people to be okay with your actions is if you make it. Oh, you show them that it was necessary to do so. Right, right. So, when they see it on the news, they need every citizen thinking what happened today was a was a tragedy diverted by their mass numbers. But what really happened today was massive police state action against peaceful protesters while protecting members of a domestic terrorist organization. I'll give I'll give you an example. I walked up to thank. The law enforcement officers that were out there today okay. by myself. Against my better judgment. <laughs> and do you know they would not even Shake accept a handshake? Right. And I'm and I'm a vet. They barely acknowledged you. They wouldn't acknowledge me. And those that did who were veterans of our United States military, who were brothers of mine in arms, they couldn't look me in my face. They held their they held their head hung in shame because they knew. The what the I was saying side. was true, and that they're on the, wrong, on the side. wrong side. The, the police, what was it, the police chief? The police chief. Yeah, the police chief, he was actually very friendly. He came up, shook our hands, um, told us that he was happy Chuck. for us to be there, and that um, we demonstrated a very peaceful act. Because he's think proud they, of what we're doing. They were expecting us from reputation and what people try to make us out to be because we are bikers and because we do yeah, ride. He said he knew we were coming. They all knew we were coming. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, know you bikers got, I watch Sons of Anna. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, we don't, yeah. People want that's to try to make yeah. we, don't, we, we, don't, we don't watch the Sons. Yeah, uh, that's a misconception. I would say we'd be more. What do you mean, Mr. That God damn it, Hollywood don't lie. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Hollywood don't lie. Okay, so we'd be like. <laughs> right, right. If, if Facebook don't lie, there if it was 1970 right, right now, Facebook you know what you see. What you see on TV with bikers, there's a lot of, of, of what they call the golden era, right. the golden age. 
I'm sure for the Panthers, the golden age was in the 60s. Yeah, it was. But for the bikers, the golden age could have been in two times. It could have been in the 40s and the 50s when it was really starting, but it was mainly in the 70s. The 60s and 70s were where the, where the motorcycle culture really started booming. And okay. th those are the golden days. And that's where Hollywood comes up with the nostalgic idea of the, the biker. Right. He's always the anti-hero. Sometimes he's not even a hero. Sometimes he's just anti-anti. Okay. That's not every biker. And when people see bikers, a lot of the times ra racism comes to mind. And, and, okay. I, and I've never understood that, but, but at the same time, I do understand that. And as a biker, I do take offense to it. But at the same time, there has been things in motorcycle culture and history that haven't exactly led the public to understand okay. certain, certain ways. Well, I, I mean, we all, I think we feel differently about this, and this is something that I wanted to say. When we were riding through here today, yeah. it, it was it. It's not offensive to us. It, it me personally, we're all different, but we okay. all feel the same way when it comes to that. When we're riding down the street and there's black people coming this way and we're coming this way and they're cussing and yelling at us and flipping us off because just because we're riding on bikes right. and we're coming in in our colors, they think that we're racist. Yeah. And we're not. And it's upsetting to us because we're here to help you. We're trying to help you. We're trying to help people. We're trying to help everyone. And we're trying and to fight against getting, the hate. I mean, we had a lady. We had a, a, not, an older black kind of lady when we pulled in today. She had her, her she granddaughter. Was, she, she had her granddaughter with her, and she was crying. She was in full-blown tears because, because her granddaughter she thought, thought we, were, we were coming to try to hurt them. Or we were racist. Yeah. And every single time we came near a group of uh, uh, five or more uh, black people, Police officers would immediately rush over. Oh no! Come on. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. no, to yeah. make sure that we yeah. weren't about to try, <laughs> to, start to try to instigate something against them. And, and every single time we tried to reach out to a different group, the cops would always come over with their hands on the gun, on the guns, acting oh. as if we were about to instigate something. Now I'll say this, and I think I can speak for the whole club on this, if if, if you guys don't mind it. But I think, as a club in whole, we're trying to usher in that new persona. Right. Of what an MC should be, right. what an MC could be, that and better. where we're going as individuals and as a club, okay. because the, the, we we work together as a club. I mean, the fact of it is, is nowadays clubs aren't really racist the way that they used to be. They're not. Okay. We know club. We know all of them. Uh, contrary to what everyone said about us, we are an MC. We go to these clubs, we deal with these clubs, right. and they're not as racist as, yeah, granted, you got racist people in them, but yeah. as a whole, most of them are. I mean, most of them, they got, they got black girlfriends, they got black kids, they got, right. I mean, we're raised there's, by black There's plenty, kids. there's a lot of large, dominant 1% clubs that have black members, there's, they have international uh, charters in other countries, okay. you know, um, that's not uncommon, and the thing is, it, it is true, coming from that world, that it is hard being an, an anti-fascist motorcycle club trying to deal with the motorcycle world, trying to right. deal with the anti-fascist world, and then while doing that, having all the groups within both of those worlds not understanding you. Right, right, right. And that's okay. And that doesn't affect what we do nor where we're going. We'll just keep doing it until we make a change. Well, I'm glad you guys mentioned up the whole culture because I noticed from California, Texas, all the way here to Georgia, I noticed a lot of MCs are changing the bottom rocker. Instead of using the states, they use the cities, maybe regions. Yeah, it's it depends. It varies from club to club. Um, you know, the originally, the, the bottom rocker was designed, you know, to designate your territory right. or your charter or where you're from. Different clubs do different things. Uh, I would say motorcycle clubs are as varied as the human beings in this world. Absolutely. Um, I, I could tell you, there are clubs right now that that are out there that have nothing in common other than riding bikes. Right, that right. the motorcycle itself will be the only thing they have in common. But that alone is still a bond. And in this world, when we're riding, every single day that we do this, one of us could die. Okay. And I can't leave this interview without asking each individual you guys. Now you know I'm going to ask this question. <laughs> I want to get y'all take on the Cossacks and the Banditos. Uh, okay, okay. I'll take the lead on this. I know. Okay. I, I believe. I mean, Y'all don't have to answer any questions. Oh, I, I, I believe it's a false flag event. I'll say this: I can't speak on any other motorcycle club, especially not nationally. But um, the incident okay. in, in a lot of the motorcycle community uh, is viewed as a false flag event okay. that the police orchestrated. I believe, and as my personal belief, that it was an attempt to make bikers into terrorists, and we right. would become domestic terrorists, and that would give the police. 
an easier ability to shut down motorcycle clubs. I also believe that the people that were shot there were innocent Americans. Right. The members of those motorcycle clubs were murdered by police officers. Okay. So, when, it's funny. This is what's really funny. It's good you brought that up. You have a lot of groups that want to talk about black lives mattering or this group's lives mattering or this group or this gender or, or transgender, whatever the issue is. Right. Everyone wants their piece of the pie, right? Right. Have you really heard the bikers cry for equal rights? Because they murdered them in cold blood in front of all their friends, in front of their family, in a public place. There's evidence that not any of the caliber rounds or any of the ballistics that came from it were fired by bikers. But yet America's not outraged that they were executed. I mean, these bikers were executed. So, right, so, so, so now as a biker, club or no club, is every guy on a motorcycle, black, white, whatever, now to assume that because he's on that motorcycle, he could just be murdered? Right, right. So Demon what if you're a black guy on a motorcycle? Right. That's got to be, like, even worse, right? So it's like you start adding in all this stuff. False flag events are designed to distract the public. They're designed to get you to look left while they're going right. Right. And at the same time, if they can reinforce some ignorant beliefs in you that will later help them control you, why not? Okay. And, and with Sons of Anarchy, yeah. people already eating it up. People right. already scared that that's real. They tried to make it's it. It's real, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood. And you know what? We, we, yeah. we, we send a lot of love and respect out to all bikers across the nation as brothers. And whether it's a motorcycle accident or whatever, when brothers go down, it's very serious. And what happened to those guys a lot of guys lost brothers out there that's right and if those are my brothers you know I would want people to take knowledge of what's going on I'd want America to wake up it's not about your people's lives this people's lives we're all human we all have the same rights we have the right to live we have the right to love we have the right to procreate and we have the life we have the right to hold on to our beliefs as long as they are not infringing on someone's safety or infringing on somebody's ability to live as well and I believe that bikers are just as friendly as anyone else and if you gave us the chance to show you the kind of people we are people wouldn't think that we're racist and they wouldn't believe that we're murderers and they wouldn't believe that everyone's a drug dealer and they wouldn't say motorcycle gang they would say motorcycle club that's right but they don't just like when they talk about black lives matters groups they call them terrorists right that's what they want us to be I, i'm gonna give you, i was a vp to another mc okay. i actually stepped down from even being offered the presidency to come to the bastards because the beliefs, the brotherhood, and the unity that we have is what I want right. and what I believe in. Absolutely. And what when people see me, they know these facts to be true about myself. You know, we hear that throughout history. These facts to be true. Right. Well, what legacy do I want to leave behind in my life? Right. My legacy for myself, for my brothers, for everything that we do is not to just incorporate small groups, right. it's to incorporate everybody so that they can grow as we grow. Okay. A legacy that we intend to be behind, and this is the way I'm going to put it to you, this is the best way, because what we did here when we walked out, we walked out of the woods and there was a group of black people that were looking at the Michigan Confederacy, okay? And, they're, and they were thinking they're racist. We walked right. up to them and just by telling them our names and saying, look, this is what we do, they immediately liked we're the Michigan ease. Confederacy. They were at ease. They were right, at ease. Right, right. We put them at ease. And another example of this, I got into an argument with a guy, right? The first thing he says out of his mouth is that I'm a pasty white cracker. This is the first thing he says out of his mouth, right? I sent him a link to our Facebook page, that's all I did. The next thing he said to me was, I appreciate everything you do for us. And that is a legacy that we created only by sending, that's all I did was send him our Facebook page. Right, right, right. And so what we've done is already gave us a legacy. Because that right there, just our Facebook link, has, has already made somebody who hated white people understand that all white people hate the same. Right, right. That's and that's more than most people can do. That's no. No people are the same. Everybody's different, and that's what everybody should understand. We should all get along for our differences and for our likes and dislikes. And Our what cultures might not be the same, but we all have to live together. You go down to the store five miles down the road, you got a black man in this store, an Asian man in this store, and a white man in this store. Well, 
What are you going to pick? It doesn't matter. If this one's got a sale, I'm going there. I don't care who's behind the counter or who's in there buying something. It doesn't matter to me. And it shouldn't matter to somebody else. You going to pay $10 more because that guy's white? They talk, they, they, talk about, they talk about bringing wealth back into you know communities like especially with you know I, I see it pushed a lot with a lot of black power guys. It's you know what can the black community do to keep black wealth in black neighborhoods? What can we do as black people you know to bring back the money that's ours and keep it within our businesses? Well, what we're looking at it is like this. I'm absolutely in agreement with that. But what about on a bigger scale where we take off the the, the, the Asian aspect or the black aspect? What can we do as humans to get money back in all of our pockets, to get all of us equal rights, to get all of us human rights? Human rights are inalienable. They're all of us. Right. Dr. King talked about human rights. The funniest thing about Martin Luther King, and what I love him for the most, is not for what he did for black people. It's for what he did for right. people. Right. Right. Kennedy had a high respect for Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King did not necessarily always have a high respect for Kennedy because he knew Kennedy was sometimes playing it like a game, whereas he was living it day to day. Right. Kennedy right. was a politician. If at the end that? of the day, That's Martin true. Luther King could look at his closest friends and even know that they were using him and still not judge and still continue to teach all people to accept each other. The Freedom Riders were white and black. If you look at the pictures, of the freedom riders, and you see the the, the the white man with the nose busted open, and the black man with the the, the cut going across his eye. There's nothing but red blood on the pavement. Right. So what the fuck are we talking about here? It's 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 just it's beyond me at this point because the the, the, the international community, the world community, right. we our community is a fucking ghetto. The international community is a living ghetto. I'm glad you said that. Well, let me put my two cents in. When you have black communities circulating the money. See, I'm a, I'm a black nationalist. Yes. I'm against black capitalism. So I, I call it out. So that's that's something that I, you know, the original Panther ideology, you know, we, we believed in socialism. Yes, the you truest know. form. Right, the truest form, right. So Anarchy we, and socialism are very close to each other as absolutely, well. Absolutely. And how absolutely. you treat your neighbors and how you distribute goods. Right, right. So I don't believe that you isolate any group financially because then you'll have another Tulsa, Oklahoma, You'll have another Rosewood. You'll have another Sweet Auburn riot. You know what I'm saying? So I don't believe you should press anybody economically because that causes strife. That, that causes But you know, independence, uh, I will agree with, I think, independence. independence. Every, every community, black, white, whatever, should have the independence to keep their own money in their community. And that is a great, okay. that is a great idea. If the okay, government okay. should also fund them equally. Yes. I, I was raised in Detroit. Okay. If, if you go to East Point, their school district is funded $150,000 a year. Right. You go 10 miles down the right. road to the white neighborhood, their school budget is $800,000 a year. Right. So, of course, they're going to be better educated. They're going to have a better future. And it's not because of them being smarter. It's because they're white. Right. And, and the government gave them more money. And that's not right. Right. Yeah. All of these communities are getting segregated and they're being brought down it by the system. It is intentional. It is intentional. And the we're communities are segregated Detroit, like this. A right. In a black community, they will promote a malt liquor, a Hennessy. That's right. If you go to Newport. the white, if you go to the white community, it's marble. And it's, Budweiser. It's Budweiser. And it's skull. It, it, it's, it, it's, you they know, got breast implant vodka. Up on right. <laughs> you know, why? Because, because they know how to sell the demographics. They want to sell the demographics and, and all you're doing is you're dumbing down the people, right, right. and you're not providing them with anything. Should and black that goes culture with be preserved? Everything. Absolutely, all cultures should be preserved because our culture is not our race. Culture and race are not the same. That's right. That's so right. if uh, right now, if in Africa somewhere there was a baby that was not from Africa, but it was a white baby, and right. it, from the moment it was born, it ended up in Africa and was raised there by that way, it would have just as much cultural. Of that area to have just as much culture of that area as the actual indigenous people of that area. Right. But it wouldn't be considered racially the same. That shows you that race isn't real. Right. You right. can't teach race. You can teach culture and to for black people to feel that they should protect their culture right now is absolutely justified. Because black culture has been exploited for over a century. Music, yeah. politics, everything. Science. How many black it, women have nursed white children? Right, that's right. True, you right know, there. And that, that's yeah. our thing right there. Let's just talk about that. And if, in if the batteries don't fit in right. the remote control, then how does it work? Because you can't tell me it doesn't work. Because they're going to say that we're not the same, but uh, 
you know, genetically on, on, on the atomic level, we're all absolutely We've the same. We've seen dogs nursing from cats. We've seen cats right. nursing from dogs. We've seen animals do it. People do it. The only difference is, is something different. It's our traits. It's and our people features. don't like different. Right. They want, it's got to be the same. same. Right, same, yeah. When and you I fall into that ideology, No, but why does white stuck. have to be what is the same? Why does white have to be the norm? And does that bother me as a white male that for some reason white is the thing? It has to be the thing? And how does that make other races feel? I don't like that. Does it make me uncomfortable? No. Does it make me feel guilty? No, it doesn't make me feel guilty. It makes me frustrated because I want to change it. Right, and, and that's what, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because... White privilege is I don't real. think nobody wants to be put in a box. No. Nobody wants to be put in a box. You know, and I feel, you know, like, I get this all the time from people in my block. You know, they're like, hey, man, you smoke weed? No, I don't smoke weed. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I train. Oh, so but you got the dreads, man. Right, you, you got, got the dreads, man. Yeah, yeah, you got know, your right. so thing going on. Right, right, but it's, it's, it's just, you know, I don't... I don't mind it's like me put a box, but I want to ask you real quick. What's up? About the Detroit situation, man. With the water, man. Oh, you God. know, damn well McDonald's and the corporation's water is a filter, man. What's going on? Uh, that, I don't drink the water. <laughs> but I, I don't either. No, I remember, I, I, I'm from Cali, and I remember the water being brown and smelling bad. You know what I'm it's saying? That's so, from all the fracking. That's all the fracking. Water directly out of the river right there. Right. And that river five miles down has five different plants pouring their garbage right. into it. We and then it's getting put through a filter that's we'll put, filtered for ten minutes we'll put it and then put into the water tank. Me and him I mean, wishing, we're both, we're brothers. Okay. We, we're from Detroit. Me and him went fishing at 12 years old, okay? We were trying to catch fish out of the same river they're pulling water out. You know what we caught? We caught a naked hooker. Dead that's what we pulled out of Detroit River, okay? The river there, the current is so high and the trash that flows through there is so ridiculous, they don't care. And as far as the water situation that they're talking about, yeah. there's, there's, we, we couldn't begin to explain it. For one, because we're down here dealing with all, this. We got other stuff going on. Right. For two, the situation they're talking about up there is a whole different thing. There's, oh, well, the government did it. Oh, well, there was a spill here. Oh, they didn't filter the water. There's no way to really tell what happened. Bro, let me tell you like this. We're so far away. But didn't the guy have to authorize it? They said it was... Yeah, I'll agree on that level. The mercury level in that river is so high, you're allowed to eat two fish a month. Yeah. Oh, that river got so bad. Fish that river got so bad that yeah. if you, too if much, you yeah. ate a too fish much out of it, I don't think this is sick. a secret. I think, like, uh, you know, when they were growing up, when you talk about Detroit, like, Detroit's like the city of America for God. But right, what's yeah, funny absolutely. is, uh, you know why? Because Detroit is what America really looks like. Detroit right. used to be... That's Detroit was a Hollywood. city that yeah. was just and for now God. it is... It, well, Detroit is what the rest of the world is going to look like if you keep fucking up. Detroit, went from Detroit a used to be Hollywood. Middle, it was the central for the United States. Everything went through there. The money went through there. Military shit went there. Right. When, when, when oh, the, the war started, they yeah. shut down the Ford factory and started making war machines at the Ford factory. That's what happened. But what happened and then after that, no useful. boom, what nothing. Happens yeah. no what useful happens is they let the you shit on your city and they don't help you fix it, and then you have Detroit. If you go to Det take a picture of Detroit and take a picture of a, of a city that has been firebombed in Afghanistan, and right. they're going to look the same. So, I'm glad you brought up the weapons because, you know, we got Senator John Kerry over there shaking hands with Putin. <laughs> and we got Benjamin Netanyahu, you know, we about to get a new president. You know, I don't know who's going to be, but... If it's Trump, we're going to Canada, bro. I'm telling you. Yeah, right yeah, we'll see. As a motorcycle <laughs> club, we're, not here, hey, we're not here to tell anyone, as, you know, because we, we're, we're, we're a big group of guys. We, all we, we, got, we got one or two of the club that may or may not be voting for Trump, but... um. <laughs> but here's the bigger picture for us. Okay. It, it's, it's the same shit show. It's the same figurehead. Right. This is yeah. not a democracy anymore. This is this is this is this all. This ain't Reaganomics. It's yeah. not. This is smoking mirrors, you know, man. And, and changing Hillary things. And Bernie, yeah. all part of the same I mean, you got a yeah. lot yeah. of yeah. people saying that Trump is they racist, didn't, they, they and then didn't you give got ice cubes going on year. Facebook and <laughs> media <laughs> outright saying that Trump is the best option. So, I mean, who do you? The system they gave us a bag of shit and said it was racist. The system. Let me ask this question: Are racism and fascism the same? Uh, no. Okay, no, 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 racism no, no, no. is within fascism. Fascism yeah. is um, 
I hate Hello. gay people. I hate black people. I hate Jews. It's you hate Super everything. Yeah. Anti-fascism is you're against all that bullshit. You don't want hate. It's okay. It's well, I'll agree with this. But racism, okay. racism could be viewed like this. Racism is something uh, I believe that there could be something like a what we call a closeted racist, right? right? Let's say that white guy that you go to work every day and he's always uh, <laughs> high-fiving you or whatever, and he's like, "Yeah, I'll see you Monday," and he goes home and you know, and he's like, "Yeah, that guy's a nigger." But then he sees you at work and he doesn't say it to your face. That's right. a closeted racist. Now, fuck him and fuck that. But is that the same as the guy that's sitting at home loading his AR-15, ready to go find some minorities on the street, call them a nigger and then murder them? Right. So that to me is fascism. They're both equally poison. I think that racism okay. would lead to fascism. It would lead to the behaviors of, of being a fascist. That you're, you, you get to the mindset that no one is better than you that you have total control over human life and that that you're infallible. Right. Because, I mean, you know, me, I'm not really moved by Trump. I'm the type of person that looks like a track record. And, you know, Hillary Clinton backed up a lot of coup d'etats in South America. Exactly. You yeah. know, she put yeah. Saudi Arabia, who has the worst human rights violation in the fucking world. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, but a lot of people are looking at her because I think I can speak for the club when I say this. I don't think a lot of great things for this country. Right? They really Is anyone here gonna vote? That's how we feel about it. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton got painted as the black president. Right, right, right. He put on some Ray Bans. He played a phone on MTV. He, he hit the joint, but he didn't inhale. We were already loving him before Monica. We were loving him yeah. before Monica, okay. and that shows you where we were. And, and most Monica people happened. didn't even care Nobody when cared. Monica came. Nobody was freaking out. You know why? Well, you know what everybody, everybody said? Is the economy fucking crashing? No, no. they're, they're over there high fiving him. Well, he's yeah. got a wife that ain't sleeping with him. He got some pent up anger. He ain't gonna be a good president. <laughs> Monica Lewis came in and said, "Oh, he's relieved." Let him go. I gotta ask you as a bit. We all had a crazy bitch. You know, we we did another show, and we were trying to discuss Saudi Arabia being our allies on one hand, and we're trying to take out Bashar al-Assad in Syria on the other hand. Now, as a veteran, how do you feel about that? I mean, we demonize one Bashar. He's got to go. He's human rights, but Saudi Arabia they cutting off. They cut off 160 people's heads, and they were like celebrating. It. Yeah, you know. It's hard to talk about overseas because we train everybody. Right, right. <laughs> right, right. We train Iraq, Iran, right. Afghanistan, Syria, right. Saudi Arabia. When does it end? Right. Stop training them. Stop giving them the weapons to destroy each other with because now they want to destroy us. Right, right. So right. all right. these groups that are out here and all these issues that are going on they've had them before us <laughs> thousands right. of years <laughs> who are we to change it's it? not our business yeah, but we're supplying business. weapons now you know what we made the biggest okay. arms deal with saudi arabia we did yeah. that and now look where we are with it okay all we're look, doing is helping move along look at what we done look yeah, at what we right. uh, look what we did with the iran like, here's a good supply the world they both, for they both kill people i mean Assad's killing the Kurds, and right. Saudi Arabia kills gay people. That's right. When Iran was, that's still, was that all falls under fighting us, that all falls under exactly. fascist regime. The Soviets if we, if were we helping. go in there right. and teach them how to read, and we teach them how, how to paint, and how to play instruments, those people are going to start being peaceful. Right. If we go in there and teach them how to fight, teach what are they going to do? Economics. They're going to keep fighting. That's all we did. And that's what we're it's doing. It's an industrial right. military <laughs> complex. It's, it's, we live in an industrial military complex that is maintained by... Uh, you know, a puppet government that also maintains itself through police state on a smaller scale. Right. And it's the police state that keeps each state in line. And as you keep going smaller and smaller and smaller from city to town, right. you can't wake people up with this. Right. You and can't then, just drop it on somebody when you want to bring it out because then they're going to bring up question. how do the Democrats feel about the Saudis? How do the Republicans right. feel about the Saudis? They don't know how they feel about it. They need someone to tell them how to feel about okay. it. Okay. And, and, and with America, you're absolutely right as far as are we picking the lesser of two evils? Yeah, we are. We're willing to overlook certain things if it benefits us in the, in the short run right. instead of it fucking us up in the long run. And every time it comes to fuck us up in the long run, they just kind of tell us we have to hunker through it. Okay. I'm tired of hunkering through it. I'm tired of watching our kids go through it. Um, I'm tired of watching the future generations eat poison food and breathe bad air. And right. Cancer, you know, I see these 
these, these shirts, you know, cured for cancer, and the kids at St. Jude's and all this shit, right? And they're great. Everybody loves cancer kids, right? Because they deserve a chance. How about if you really cared about cancer kids, why don't you start questioning the politics and the legislation right. that put the companies in power, That's that right. put the chemicals around us every single day? Because we're all fucking infected by it. We're all literally breathing, eating it, shitting it. That's right. And we're separately experiencing our own reality using the same products and not realizing that as a whole, the whole population is becoming affected by the products that we use right. and the companies and, and the governments that back those companies that want us to use them. Okay. Here's my question for you. Okay. The U.S. is the police of the world. Absolutely. Why are we still policing up people who don't want our help? And we can't help ourselves. Right, right. And I want to add to that, too. That's a good question. I want to add to, you know, just recently, we just, uh, we had a Republican Congress and Senate. They were going to pass HB 757, meaning if I'm an owner and there's homosexuals, I can refuse them service. Yep. So everybody, the, the governor shot it down. And one of the co-corporations that backed it was Apple. Apple saying, no, we don't want nothing to do with it. But Apple is supporting Saudi Arabia that behaves homosexuals. So, you know well, what I'm saying? What about Target? Target has supplied many terroristic groups right. money through their own support as a donation to a charitable cause. How much money does end up, you know, when you see these, these, these overseas help the children, any of this stuff, when you send your money out of the world, it's funny people don't know where it goes to right people don't even care people don't it's, it's almost like we don't want to know where our food comes from we don't want to know where the money goes we don't want to know who's killing who we don't know why they're killing who we don't want to know why the blacks are angry why the whites are confused why this we, everyone just wants to live in their own little fucking bubble until that bubble gets popped and right. i don't think this bubble is going to go much longer That's without right. popping okay gentlemen y'all want to we, we down we down to man five minutes this is great man we got it. Y'all, we all come back to Atlanta, man. We got part two of this, man. I'd say, you know, our next, our next uh, action is going to be our one-year anniversary, which is next month. Uh, that's one year of us being on the bikes every single day, doing this every single day. This isn't on the weekends. This isn't some part-time shit. This is every fucking day putting the patch on. You know, we've been there for each other for a lot for this year. We have our one-year anniversary coming up, and our next event will be July 17th at the, at the South Carolina State House. Um... Apparently some hate groups aren't happy about the Confederate flag again, so they're going to go raise their own flag, and those groups are trying to come back into our town, and we will be there with our supporters and followers yet again trying to uh, deter them from coming to our city. Now this group, uh, is this heritage not haters? We're not sure. Um, we've heard, we, it's, this, it's sort of the same situation here that happened in Stone Mountain. We're, we're not sure who's on what side right now and what groups are officially coming. Yeah, we got to... There's no, there's no communication we'll at least take between the sides. Right, we gotta communicate, man. That's that's you know that that, that, that we we tried right. doing it with this event and we, I, I'd say, I'd say the biggest lesson we learned today, other than you know the, you know the fact of all of us coming together and, and the way that a lot of groups can still accomplish a goal while still having a lot of disagreements, right. is let's look at the disagreements we're having and weigh out whether or not they're equally as important to the problems that we're fighting. Right. Because I don't think that they are. And I think that the, those disagreements are going to constantly be our Achilles heel. Right. They're gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get us every time. Every single time. And the groups who were with us today, they followed our lead. Okay. We took a nonviolent action. They took a nonviolent action. That's what's right. We saw trouble fixing to break out and decided to step away. Yeah, that group that and got they arrested stepped today, away. we didn't even see them today. So we, right, we weren't yeah. even around. We have a they way. Got, I know who they are. Man. We have we have a way of of, of, of of being there for the people that really matter, and we can tell the people that are in it for the wrong reasons. And right. it's fine for whatever reason you want to show up, as long as you're not hurting anybody. I'm not here to judge you. If you want to get a Facebook picture and be cool, that's fine. Um, the bigger picture being, your actions are affecting other people, and right. how your group acts affects how everyone else treats other groups. And today, the way that we were treating each other, as far as communicating. It shows that we have a long way to go. 
But once those people that got arrested find out that people went there and didn't get arrested, they don't have a single thought about that. Man. Yeah, or, or well, the guy that's throwing rocks at cops in or, full tactical. Or they're going to do what they did last time that. and get mad at us for not getting arrested. Well, yeah, and that's, a, yeah. that's, that's on, probably going to be really? the biggest thing. It's, you know, this yeah, it's uh, a revolutionary yeah, culture. Yeah, and I, I know you've seen it on your thing. side. It's like, you know, man, why did you go to jail? Or you know, why you obviously you weren't something up, you, were, yeah. you weren't being wild enough. Or yeah. you know, why did you got to beat somebody up and take a hood? You know, it's like to get unless they're going to be, you violence. know, it's better to be reactionary but than we, actionary in most situations. And today, why should we promote the best way to put it though is why fair. your ass is sitting in jail, right? Gone out of this. They're fucking getting airlifted, not because of you. You're in jail. So why are they getting airlifted? Because yeah. of Some five us. Stars because we're right here. Now the rest of the group are here. Yeah. But they you, got airlifted out of there because we were still. And we would like to, you know, no matter what. We all went to jail. They could have walked home. We yeah, want to say much respect to all the groups that were there with us today, no matter what. Yeah, uh, awesome. No awesome matter what, group, and we have we have no problem with anybody. Um, no disrespect to anybody. We, it, it was a learning experience for a lot of us, and uh, you know we're here. We're all together, and we look forward to being with those groups again if they will uh, if we'll have us in the future. Right, and, and let me say this: I said earlier, I'm a black man, so that doesn't. I'm not a black supremacist. No, and I believe there's a very there's a very big difference between those two. The right, same way, right. the same way you can view the uh, you know uh, the, the Jewish side of things. If you look right, at Israel right. and, and all that, you, there's a difference between nationalism and Zionism. Right, right, right. And, and, well, you know, uh, nationalism gets a bad name too. Though, uh, yeah, right? and, and it gets mixed in and, yeah, and, yeah. and convoluted. And, and I think even even with even if someone was a black supremacist, okay, um, why would you show up to an event? protesting a hate group that hates you and you're hating them for hating you but you hate them right the, promote, the hate the hate promote hate the hate is what keeps the cycle going hate. we're not going to hate right, anybody right, right. You know, yeah. we don't actually i'll just say this we don't hate the kkk we don't hate you we just feel sorry for you and, right, and, right, and right. we're watching no, it's like yeah. it's like watching a tra- it's like watching a, a train wreck it's like watching a car crash and, and sometimes you can save people and sometimes you can't right, right, and right. if they don't want to be saved well fuck them they but see, be. but you guys offered a different perspective because I had asked another group, you know, I said that I don't agree with the KKK, but I will protect their free speech. And I agree uh, with that as well, as long as their free speech is not promoting people to commit acts of violence. That's a good point. I would say this, you know, if I was, uh, you know, in a position of power and I'm, I'm the president of this club, if I started telling uh, members of my group to go out and commit acts of violence, um, even though... Even though I'm the one asking for it and they're following me as a group, the group is going to be held responsible even if other members are involved in it. If the KKK has three or four guys that go out and hurt people and they have 100 people that don't, those 100 people are still accountable for those four guys' actions. That's right. So in this club, that's something that as an MC, in this club, we relate to. Yeah, and we that's can right. relate to that. So in this club, if one of our brothers does something, we all have to answer for it. In their world, it should be the same. That's right. And Easiest way to look. I am my brother's keeper. That's right. And I don't think that they I don't think that they know what that word even means. And I think that a lot of the groups that showed up today, they've got a lot of brotherhood in the right and sisterhood in, in the right ways. There were some pretty righteous brothers and sisters out there today, and it's seeds, and seeds need time to grow. And we got a little bit of sunshine today and some water, and we'll see how it goes. Sometimes you got to transplant good seeds That's right. out of bad soil and put them in some good soil. Yes. And that's what I think we need. We need some good soil. For all we, of us. We said the key thing, human rights, man. So, hey, with that out, man, we, we done did that hour. We out. Peace. Peace. Love you, dog.